Welcome back guys. This is Gaming with Austin and today we're on episode 89 of Pyramid City. <laughs> and the healthcare two hundred years later is going to be a lot better than it is now. Because we'll have more research into a lot of genetic diseases. They have a high case fa fatality rate. We'll have a better understanding of certain diseases that have a high case fatality rate. Like Alzheimer's. As people live longer, their risk, their likelihood of developing heart disease actually increases. What you're eating plays a role in your likelihood of heart disease. What you're eating plays a bigger role in heart disease than you think. Some people blame heart disease on sedentary lifestyle. There are people out there born with heart disease. What your mother eat, uh, ate during her pregnancy with you, while she was pregnant with you, might actually play a bigger role in your likelihood of developing heart disease later in life, too. The earlier you go vegan, the less likely you are to suffer heart disease by 60 years old. But you know, some people oppose a vegan diet believing that it does not provide any cl enough cholesterol. That you need to source your cholesterol in your diet. Because some people believe that our bodies either don't produce any cholesterol or do, does not produce enough. There's LDL aka bad cholesterol and there's HDL which is good cholesterol. Coronary artery disease is not in every family but what I learned is heart disease Almost every family in the world does have a member that has heart disease in some form. Of some sorts. It doesn't have to be coronary artery disease. It can also be in a form of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Which is what killed Benjamin Breedlove. Which is what killed Benjamin Breedlove. Back in 2011. And he was born with it. He didn't develop it after birth, he was born with it. There are other forms of heart disease that some family members of every family have. This might also include congenital heart defects. That 
can get passed on to children through genetic transfer. Some of it has to do with the fact that we haven't evolved to be able to break down cholesterol, dietary cholesterol. It just sits there for the rest of your life. Waiting for it to kill you. At the most opportune time. The reason why there are so many cases of atherosclerosis in people over 65 years old is that it's mainly because most of them ate animal products earlier in life. A lot of it has to do with what you're eating. That affects your risk of atherosclerosis. It's not entirely about your fat percentage. Because you can have a high fat percentage and have a low risk of heart, uh, and you can be healthy. Because it's about what you're eating. Like, dietary cholesterol is known to inhibit the production of adiponectin. Like, this is just a theory. This is just my theory. It's not confirmed. But it's pretty likely. The amount of vitamin D your body absorbs from your skin is only limited by the amount of fat you have in reserve underneath your skin. That is just beneath your skin. The amount of subcutaneous fat you have it is actually limited by the amount of subcutaneous fat you have. Believe it or not. If I had a child, I'm going to raise my child to be vegan their entire life. I'm going to talk with the schools about ensuring the child goes for vegan options. That's what it'd be like if I had children. I'd raise them all on a vegan diet. I know some people would frown upon on this. But it's your opinion. But there are people out there who believe that children should not go vegan, believing that they're not producing, uh, they either cannot produce enough vitamin D, nor can they produce enough cholesterol. Every animal cell is made of cholesterol. Every animal cell is made of cholesterol. All animal cells have are made of cholesterol. Thankfully, our bodies produce as much cholesterol as necessary. It's physiologically necessary for survival. Sometimes you just have to supplement your cholesterol in the event your body's not producing enough. The less cholesterol your body produces, the more cholesterol you'd have to supplement in your diet. Like, if it's producing less than the bare minimum necessary for survival, 
you should at least go vegetarian. Because there is some cholesterol on a vegetarian diet, but the amount of cholesterol on a vegan diet is almost none. Why I say almost is that even vegetables do have cholesterol too, albeit in much smaller amounts. <laughs> and cholesterol is crucial for the formation of vitamin D. If your body's not producing enough cholesterol, your bones can become brittle from vitamin D deficiency because vitamin D is one of the products of cholesterol breakdown from the cholesterol your body produces. Thankfully, most of us produce enough cholesterol to survive. Eventually, I might think about doing some videos in which I'd critique Sparage's videos. having a counter-argument against his carnivore diet. I'd provide a counter-argument against Sparage's videos. Kind of like Beavis and Butthead. One of the videos I might think about critiquing is why 90% of vegans in Europe are white, I'd make a critique against that. I'd, I'd even make a critique against Sverige's video called, uh, where he talks about racism and slavery. Like, my goal is to try to fill in the gaps that vegan gains left behind. As well as other vegan YouTubers. My goal is to help fill in the gaps. That vegan gain, that Richard left behind. Yes, that's actually his real name. Yes, that's actually his real name, Richard Burgess. That's actually his real name. A better incentive for me to work out than money is food. And that is mainly because you need food in order to survive. That is mainly because you need food in order to survive. I'd provide a counter-argument against Sparage's videos. <laughs> Smith... 
I know he did a video regarding vegan. Uh, I know. Uh, I know that Vegan Games did a video regarding veganism destroyed in a minute. I knew he. I know he did that. I'd set up some theories. His belief on slavery, this is just theoretical. It's just a possibility. I don't think it's certain. Like, the likelihood that slavery is human nature, it is not certain. And some slave owners s try to avoid taxes. Even if we tried to tax the rich, if we would have started taxing the hell out of the rich back in the 1800s, the slave owners would have retaliated. Yes, I'd probably be critiquing Dennis Prager's videos, too. There are some people... There are some people who simply cannot survive fending for themselves. That's the problem with capitalism. Some people cannot fend for some uh, for themselves because they're they are too weak to do so physically. If we subsidize all the medicine, it'd be easier to afford those drugs. If the state subsidizes all the drugs, we'd be able to afford them more easily. If slavery was still legal, workers would not be allowed to talk about the working conditions, and ag-gag laws would be put into place, and businesses would hide the actual death toll, just to keep their business growing. Atrophy means abnormal growth. Atrophy means... There is no growth. Hypertrophy means massive growth. High level of growth. Relative to catabol uh, catabolicis. <laughs> I might think about critiquing Dennis Prager's videos. <laughs> if Sarge was a, a world leader, who controlled every aspect of our life, including our diet, that it'd be pretty cruel. Not only would there be a lot of genocide, But a lot of uh, but a lot of us are deceived into believing that meat is good for you. When in truth, it's not good. It's not that good for you. Meat's really not that good for you.
Capitalism is ultimately bad for the environment. And it's bad for the animals, too. It's also bad for nature. Capitalism's only recent. So capitalism's not human nature. Some people think it is, but really it's not. Capitalism straight up goes against human nature. Socialism and communism should be about respecting each, other, each other's right to live. When food is available. When food is abundant and plentiful. It shouldn't be about killing the weaker ones. But you know, even if the weaker ones are, that are less suited to compete are not killed by us, eventually, sometimes the weaker animals that are less suited to compete, some of them actually end up dying before they're even born. Some of them actually end up dying before they're even born. Some actually end up dying before they're even born. When resources are abundant, there's no need to compete as much. Which means you're less likely to kill one another. Even the drug com those big drug companies are competing for dominance in the drug and in pharmaceutical industry. At the same time, they are creating cartels at the same time. All intellectual property... ...from the larger companies... ...should be state-owned. So the government can make money to, to fund our health care. What makes it so hard for people to quit... Uh, uh, ...hold on... ...to the remission from tobacco addiction? Some of it has to do with the genetics of addiction. Some people are more genetically prone to addiction than others. Some animals that are less suited to, to compete actually end up dying before they're even born. And competition is a universal trait. Throughout all living things in the universe. Even plants do compete too. What makes sunlight a limited resource? Eventually all the stars in the universe will burn out. That's why resources are are ultimately pretty scarce on a large scale. That is because eventually all the stars in the universe will burn out. But the amount of time it'll be... Um, how long will it be until that happens? Think of this. The average lifespan of a human being is about 80 years. The universe has only been around for at least 13.8 billion years. Yeah. That's 10... That is almost 10 orders of magnitude greater. Want to know what's what's much uh, what's ninety orders of magnitude greater? Approximately, 
the time it'll take for the last black hole to evaporate from a process called Hawking radiation. Then the universe would be completely empty. In several orders of magnitude greater than that, eventually the last particles will have reached their final energy state. Ultimately, nothing is free. Because eventually, even particles aren't... Uh, even the elementary particles of the universe are not free to do whatever they want. That is because of the laws of thermodynamics. Like, every, every, every process that takes place in the universe, even down to the quantum level, must comply with the laws of thermodynamics. You're not free to digest food whenever you want. Digestion of your food has a cost. Yes, it's an energetic cost. No matter, even in a money, even in a moneyless society, every process has a cost. Even in a moneyless society, that cost in a moneyless society that is involved more is energetic cost. <laughs> yes, there is also an energetic cost of doing labor. Skilled or not, there is also an energetic cost to doing any sort of labor. Even if member of one's members of one's own species does not kill the ones less suited to compete, ultimately they might end up getting killed by predators. Sometimes they actually end up getting killed by predators instead. Because one thing that will make you more suited to compete is your ability to run very fast. It applies to every animal. This is why... This is actually the real reason why some people run faster than others. Usain Bolt descended from a tribe that is known for losing a bit of members from predators. Which meant they have to run fast to avoid the predators. Yes, that's oh, um, that tribe was actually in Africa. Which meant, you know, it's not just competition for food that could drive people into evolving to run faster. Losing a lot of your family members due to predation can drive the descendants into being able to run extremely fast. When there's not as much predators around, you don't need to run as fast. You know, not only exercise performance ends up slowing down in the winter, which is why oftentimes New Year's resolution to exercise more and lose weight often fails, there's a, physio there's a biological reason for that. Like, it's not just... Even work performance ends up dropping in the winter. That is because your your brain's telling you to conserve energy, to survive. It's your brain telling you to conserve energy for the winter. Bears have a similar trait in which they actually end up hibernating in the winter. Just like how a lot of animals need sleep, Bears need to hibernate. Yet bears are exploited in the, in the entertainment industry for the sole purpose of making a profit. Which 
goes against her natural order. The rule of surviving if your predator is kill or be kill kill your prey or be killed by the prey in some form. Whether it be by getting kicked by the prey, punched by the prey, bit by the prey, or straight up losing the prey as the prey runs away. You end up starving to death. Even dead people and dead animals take part in the circle of life. Anyways... This should be it for, the, um, for episode 89 of Pyramid City. This is Gaming with Austin signing off. Don't forget to leave a like if you like this video. Dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe for more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more content like this. As always, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more Gaming with Austin signing off. And, as always, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. And, choose.